So today we're going to do drawing Lewis structures. And the big thing that you need to realize before we get started is a Lewis structure is a representation of a molecule. It's it's not accurate because electrons are in constant motion. This is just representing kind of the average location of the electrons, where they spend the most time. That doesn't mean that they're always there. It's not something that's just frozen in space. It's just the average picture. It's kind of what it would sort of look like on average. Electrons are always moving. All right, so step one in drawing a Lewis structure, add up. The total valence electrons. If it's negative or positive, add or subtract electrons for that too. So if it's a polyatomic ion. Step two, choose your central atom. It's always the least electronegative, the one that's the farthest from fluorine. And it's never hydrogen. Hydrogen can't be in the middle because hydrogen only makes one bond. Step two or three, bond each atom to the central atom once. Step four, fill in extra electrons as lone pairs. Okay, so then if you've done all these things and then all your atoms don't have a full octet, you go on to step five and you use double or triple bonds if necessary. and then we're going to do some examples. CH4, methane. So step one, add up valence electrons. Carbon group 14 has four plus four hydrogens that each have one. I have eight total valence electrons to work with. And then I choose my central atom. Has to be carbon, hydrogen can't be. bond each one one time. I just used two, four, six, eight. Remember, put a note, there are two electrons per bond. Okay. 
Okay. I used eight. I have zero left, so now I just need to make sure that all my octets are full. Carbon has two, four, six, eight, a full octet. Each hydrogen only has two, but for hydrogen that is a full octet because it only has one energy level and that only holds two. Hydrogen is full with two electrons. So that's my Lewis structure for methane. All right, let's do another one. Water, two hydrogens, one oxygen group 16, it has six. Oxygen's in the middle, bonded, that leaves me with four two, four in the bonds. So those four extra electrons go in as lone pairs. We wouldn't put them on hydrogen because hydrogens al al already have full octets. So two lone pairs on oxygen. Now oxygen has two, four, six, eight, and each hydrogen has two. Diatomic oxygen. We have 12. No central atom, just O bonded to O. Gives me 10. I fill those in as lone pairs. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Then I check and see if all my octets are full. This oxygen has a full octet, two, four, six, eight. But this oxygen has does not. It only has two, four, six. The only way to fix this is to make a double bond. You can't add more electrons. I can't do this. That's illegal. I don't have enough electrons to do that. I have to pick up one of my lone pairs and make it a double bond. Now they both have two, four, six, eight. That's where the double bonding comes into play. When you haven't filled the octets, but you run out of electrons. Questions? Two more. PCL6 minus. Phosphorus is in group 15, so it has five. Six chlorines, group 17, they have seven. And then I have to deal with this minus one charge. What do I do? Minus means it gained an extra electron. So 42, 47, 48. Then I choose my central atom. Phosphorus is less electronegative than chlorine. And then I bond each one to the central atom. And I just used 12, six bonds. Probably a lot of you are thinking that this is not following the rules. Phosphorus has more than eight electrons. This is what we call an expanded octet. Atoms in period three and below are big enough that they can hold more than eight valence electrons sometimes. You do not need to memorize which atoms have an expanded octet. All you need to know is if they tell you something has an expanded octet, 
that means you can make more than eight valence electrons. You can make more than eight in the octet. So they would say to you, draw this molecule with an expanded octet, and then you would know to draw this. Okay, I have 36, so each chlorine gets three lone pairs. Then my chlorines have eight. My phosphorus has the expanded octet, and I need to show that it has a one minus charge. Questions? Last one. BF3, so the way that this has an expanded octet, BF3 is called dative or coordinate bonding. Which is a fancy way of saying it's electron deficient. It does not have a full octet. Three valence electrons from boron, 21 from three fluorines gives me 24. Eighteen left over. Each one gets three lone pairs. And that is my Lewis structure for boron trifluoride. This is a dative molecule. Coordinate bonding is what this is called. And the central atom is electron deficient. Again, you'll always be told that the central atom is going to be electron deficient. You don't have to memorize that. You just have to know what it means for drawing the molecule. Okay, today's homework is the first Lewis Structure Worksheet. On those worksheets, they're PDFs. You can just draw your things on a piece of paper and take a picture of that and submit it. You don't have to do the typing or drawing on your Chromebook.